This is Franken tree and it has 150 different varieties of apples grafted onto one tree. Now the dark underbelly of this kind of scion trading and Franken tree making where apples are concerned is apple mosaic virus because if you get one infected scion everything on the tree becomes infected because it's systemic. That means that if I take any scion off this tree and send it to anyone else, wherever they graft it and wherever they share it, they're spreading this disease. Now the good news is that apple mosaic virus is usually not that big of a deal. I don't know a lot about the pathology of it, but about the worst that I've seen happen, you know, that I could actually observe, is that the leaves partially turn white, then they get sunburned, and they'll crinkle up and become affected. And, apparently can actually affect the bearing of the tree. The other good thing is that very few varieties are badly affected. So only a small percentage of varieties, at least here, as far as I've been able to observe, are actually affected. But since this tree is affected, this gives us a chance to go around the entire tree and see which varieties are infected and make a list. So I'm going to do that today and I'm also going to go around to all of my other apple trees. And, you know, this one I know they're, they're exposed so we can check that for sure but I'm just going to check the other ones to kind of like round out the list a little bit. That list will be available in the comments to this video and on my blog posts which will accompany this video on skillcult.com. So some varieties are susceptible and some aren't. Some are extra susceptible. My friend Mark Albert said that somewhere he used to work or in a nursery he owned or something like that they used to use a certain variety of apple which was a Hughes Virginia crab to index for apple mosaic virus. So that means that the, this was an especially susceptible variety. And if you got a new tree, say I, I grafted a ash meads kernel or something, and I was gonna collect scions and propagate them and send out trees. And I wanted to test to see if that tree was infected because maybe it doesn't show any signs, right? See, that's the problem. I have, you know, 200 varieties here, or whatever I have, and I go around collecting scions. And if most uh, varieties don't show the disease, I could be sending out infected scions, and I probably do, and that's just part of the game at this point. But they would graft on Hughes Virginia crab and graft the scion on that and watch it to see if it expressed the problem, just like on this tree, certain varieties are expressing it and certain ones aren't. So that's something interesting to know for the future that you could uh, use to check for infection of varieties that maybe not show it. So we're gonna strap on the GoPro here, take a look around. Okay, let's take a look. Here is an example. That's pretty bad right there. Rubinette. Another variety that I love up here is badly affected, and that's Catherine. Albert Edder's Catherine, spelled with a K. Let's find some good examples. Here you go. Another good example there. You can see just parts of the leaf will turn white like that. This one's showing much less, but it's, it is showing it. And I'll be also keeping track of kind of how bad they are. Like I would call this medium, well, maybe medium bad actually. Whereas red asterisk in here, I would call, definitely call bad. And you can see this will start to happen to the leaves where they'll turn brown like that. This is kind of tobacco color. Here's an especially bad one. It kind of has a different presentation. It's actually kind of pretty. And you'll see again here where the leaf is dying on the edge. Okay, I'm going to get a count for you. I'll be back. I'm back with a list, which is thankfully quite short. Now, some caveats about using this list and this whole process in general. Uh, there are worse and better years for this. So I don't know if this is a bad year. There could, there could be varieties that aren't expressing it. There were at least three or four on here that I couldn't identify because the tags fell off. Um, but the ones I know for sure are Rubinette, Catherine, that's Catherine with a K, Red Astrakhan, Sam Young, Cherry Cox, Sweet Sixteen, Lyman Summer, Hudson's Golden Gem, Pitmiston Pineapple, Pink Parfait, Candle Synap, Whitney Crab, Bullock's Pippin, and Molly's Delicious. So I'll put that in the description to this video and also on the blog post, which will be at skillcult.com. Well, you'll have to go to the blog or search the website for Apple Mosaic Virus.
And yeah, that's about all I have to say about it. I didn't find any on any of my other trees, all spread around, all the cordon trees and all of that stuff. And that's not really surprising given if there's 150 varieties on here and we have five, it's 14 or 15 varieties that I, I found on here and maybe another three or four that were unlabeled. So let's say max 20 varieties out of 150, that's still a relatively small percentage. Even if a lot of those are infected, they may just not be showing it. Uh, but I did check the varieties that are on this list from this tree that I have grafted elsewhere and I didn't find any infected scions. In some cases, I've bothered to go out of my way to get uninfected scions from other people to start those trees. You know, like I grew uh, cherry cocks on here or something. I'm not going to take the cherry cock scion off of this tree. I'm going to get another one from somebody else and start a new tree with that so it's not infected. And as far as um, what to do about this virus in general, you know, it's not a huge deal. But on the other hand, we shouldn't just be spreading it around, especially when we know. Like if you don't know if a variety is infected, then well, you just have to send out scions. But I won't send off anything from this tree unless it's super rare and I know the person can't get it anywhere else. Because if we don't pay any attention at all, pretty soon, you know, just everything's going to have it. There are also not that many sources where you can get guaranteed virus-free stock, especially of these rare heirlooms. So even an heirloom nursery may not go through the process of indexing to figure out if their stock is uh, infected or not. So ultimately, it's just a problem that's not completely avoidable is how I feel about it right now. And it is going to spread, you know, among collectors like me and uh, most of the people that would be watching this it's definitely going to continue to spread and, you know, at least do what little you can to maybe prevent that if you know something's infected. All right, thank you for watching.